I want to sort of reintroduce Hazel to you in preparation for her bringing the new ISIS myth and say that for me, Hazel brings this amazing combination of warmth and history and art and vision and in doing so allows us to understand things that we have heard of before in new and imaginative ways, thus deepening our experience. And so I'm extremely excited that Hazel will be now sharing this new ISIS myth with us. Thank you so much. It's so great to be together, the three of us, the three musketeers and all of you, this is beautiful. And to be in this chalice that, uh, that Jordan has made for us. So yeah, this new ISIS myth. Have some of you seen it? Have you, have you looked at it? You know, it comes from Rudolf Steiner 102 years ago. So of course, we know that these 100 year milestones are an important Rosicrucian mystery, right? And when they're reached, the impulse set forth a century before having ripened like a seed in the grave, can now be reborn, renewed and, and lived into to create a future where the new Isis can be unveiled by humanity in full consciousness. So our, our dear Dr. Steiner says, it is not the Christ we lack, but the knowledge of Christ, the Sophia of Christ, the Isis of Christ we are lacking. So the truth and, and power of the word, we got to play a little bit with this receiving of the word, right? It must be resurrected through our striving to activate the wisdom of Anthroposophia within each of us to bring love to light. And, you know, Rudolf Schutter told this tale on Epiphany in his uh, 1918 lecture, Ancient Myths and the New Isis Mystery, their meaning and connection with evolution. This is part of our evolution. And as we know, Epiphany was the last of the holy nights, right? So did you know that that's the birthday of, of um, Joan of Arc? Go figure. So, so I've adapted it. And, you know, so that the voice of the new Isis is spoken in the first person. And I've added my little art collages because for me, the intentional three-folding of art, science, and spirituality must come forth in our time. So, are you ready to begin? Okay, let us attend to the myth-telling of the new Isis. Open thou my lips that I may show forth thy praise. And so it was, that it happened like this. While humankind was busy, 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 being distracted by the materialistic thinking of the deceiver, the hardener, the denier, the fallen light bearer, the seducer, spirited me away. He slew my divine wisdom, carried me out into space and sunk me deep into the world ocean. Isis, Sophia, wisdom of God, Lucifer has slain her, and on wings of cosmic forces carried her away into the depths of space. Christ will, working in us, shall tear her from Lucifer, and on grounds of spiritual worlds call to new life in human souls. Isis Sophia, wisdom of God. So dear friends, when you look out into the heights and see the stars, moving now only according to mathematical lines, there you see the grave of the world soul. For my divine wisdom the Sophia of Isis was slain. Will you seek me? Will you dare to approach the science of fallen light 
with its mathematical abstraction, gathering the courage to see past the fear-based materialism of the deceiver, armed with the force of the Christos, the being of love, look for me, dear ones, in the bow of color. For the seducer has spread me out into the beauty of the whole universe. I shine forth from the cosmos in an aura of many colors. Yet, I am hard to see. For the fallen light has blurred and washed out my colors in all their clear distinctness, blended and merged them into a dull, uniform, electric light. Dear Goethe sought me, but he was not completely able to spiritualize his discoveries just yet. So still am I spread out over the marvelous manifold and secret deeds of the whole cosmos. And so our story continues, dear friends, closer still to this now. For as time went on, the age of secular science got stronger and spiritually unaware, ill-behaved persons lacking in culture or artistic appreciation, concerned only with materialistic values, grew. I was pushed further back with the smug mind of conventional immorality. Yet and still, there was a true human being, a humble initiate who knew me. He knew me through my beloved son, Michael, and our connection to the being of love. The humble initiate worked to prepare the Michaelites for a new way of thinking, a renewed way of living and doing. And so, in the midst of all this, there, upon a hill, some say it was St. Odalie's Hill, where the grail mysteries lay in spiritual seclusion among the caves of the Hermitage. Yet, hidden in plain sight, was erected a building, which was considered to be very remarkable in the land of materialism. To use the language of Goethe, the building represented an open secret, for the building was open to all. In fact, everyone could see it at the most convenient times. But most people saw only the surface of the surface of something that to them was an interesting oddity. Most people looked past what was represented there in the detailed craftsmanship, out picturing the sacred. A large, wooden, hand-hewn statue was intended to be the central point of the building. The statue represented a group of beings, a representative of humanity, and two figures showing the adversarial polarities, known as Lucifer, the seducer, and Araman, the deceiver. People looked at the statue and could not see humor and did not know in this age of scientific abstraction in the land of materialism that the statue was in fact really a veil for my invisible being brought down in part from the starry ocean heights through the purified imagination of that humble initiate. But my invisible being was of course not noticed by the people for a dull veil covered the eyes of the onlookers so they could not see that it was I, the new Isis. Only a very few unusual folk in that land of scientific profundity had ever even fathomed this remarkable connection between what was visible and what as the new Isis was concealed behind that open and evident secret. 
please remember, dear ones, that behind the figures was not an abstract new Isis. No, it is my true wisdom embodied as the actual new Isis, Mary, Sophia. There were some few who in special circumstances, in rare meditative moments, had caught a glimpse of me as this new Isis and found that I was asleep. Sometimes these people were able to turn in those special moments and read the inscription, which is plainly there at the spot where the statue stands, but which has been read by very few. And yet, the inscription stands clearly there, clearly as the inscription once stood on my completely veiled form in ancient Egypt. The new inscription says, I am humanity. I am the past, the present, and the future. Every mortal should lift my veil. Then along came a spirit visitor, a being who approached my sleeping figure as the new Isis. And this being came back again and again. And as the sleeping Isis, I considered this spirit visitor to be my special benefactor. And because of his keen attention, I thought perhaps I loved him. And so it was that one day I came to believe in a, a strange illusion or, or, or was it a fantasy or, or perhaps the past in shadow form? I did not then know. The visitor, also believed in this particular illusion, which was that I, as the new Isis, had given birth. I, consid I considered the spirit, the spirit visitor who, looked, who I looked on as my patron to be the father. He regarded himself as the father, but in reality, he was not. And then I came to see that the spirit visitor was none other than Typhoon or Set, the Egyptian evil one in a new form, a clever combination of the seducer and the deceiver, who believed that he could acquire a special increase of power in the world if he took possession of me again as the new Isis. So there it was that as the new Isis, I, I had given birth to an offspring, but I did not yet know its nature. I, I knew nothing of its character or being. I felt I had to move it away from the new typhoon. So I, I dragged it into far off lands to keep it safe. I, I trailed my new offspring about. And since I dragged it through so many regions of the world, fell into pieces, into 14 parts, through the very power of the world. Yes, as the new Isis, I carried my offspring into the world and the world dismembered it. 14 pieces, four plus one to equal five, the number of humanity. And when the spirit visitor, the new clever combined seducer and deceiver, the new typhoon had come to know of this, he gathered together the 14 pieces and with all the data of modern science, he again made a being, a single total out of the 14 pieces. But in this being, there was only mechanical laws, the law of the machine, not the true ideal of the human being. And so it was, my friends, that a being had arisen with the appearance of life, but with the laws of a machine. 
And since this presence had arisen out of 14 pieces, it could reproduce itself again 14-fold. And the new typhoon could give a reflection of his own being to each piece, so that each of the 14 offspring of myself as the new Isis had a countenance that resembled the new typhoon. And I had to follow this, this whole strange affair, half divining it, half knowing that I could see the whole phenomenal change that had come to my offspring. I, I knew that I had dragged it around the world, that, that I had brought all this to pass myself. But I was not alone. There came a day when through the service of the humble initiate, I began to envision my offspring in its true its genuine form. And I was able to collect it again, gather it from a group of spirit beings who had received it from some helpful elementals. As I took in my true offspring, which only through an illusion had been stamped into with the countenance of Typhoon, there dawned upon me a remarkable mystic vision. I suddenly noticed that I still had the cow horns of ancient Egypt in spite of having become the new Isis. And lo and behold, when I, when I had this vision, the power of my augury summoned, some say old Typhoon himself, some say Mercury. And he was obliged through the power of my clear sight as the new Isis to set a crown on my head in the place where once the old Isis had worn the crown which Horus had seized from her, right there on the spot where I had worn the cow horns. <laughs> but this crown was merely made of paper, covered with all sorts of writings of a clever scientific nature important looking charts and graphs, statistics. Yet and still it was paper. So now I had two crowns on my head, the cow horns and the paper crown embellished with all the acumen of scientific profundity. Then through the strength of my new inspired clairvoyance and the dedicated work of the humble initiate, there arose in me one day the deep meaning as far as the age could reach, which is described in St. John's Gospel as the Logos, the Word renewed. There arose in me the revelation of the true significance of the being of love's sacrifice for all the ages yet to come. Through this strength, the power of the cow horns grasped the paper crown and changed it into a golden crown, a golden crown that was in truth a chalice, a holy grail, which can hold the power of the word newly forged through a spiritual science founded from the fires of rebirth at that faithful Christmas conference presided over by the humble initiate, active on the foundation stone of love planted in all hearts that are open to my light of wisdom. The humble initiate named my redeemed offspring Anthroposophia, so that now I can live within your human soul, the bridal chamber of the heart, where through your focused free willing, a sacred marriage can be sanctified. The sacred marriage of spirit to soul, of warmth to light. Are you ready to say I do? <laughs> <laughs> 